Hello and welcome back. As you recall, last week, it was a rather long story that we looked into, but we studied about the book of Esther. And if you remember, Esther is one of two books in the Bible that's named for a, a woman. One is the book of Ruth and then the book of Esther. And Esther is really a fascinating story. If you did not see it last year, I, last week, I would suggest or s encourage you to find last week's YouTube and listen to it to get the story straight. Today we're just going to do a quick recap of that story, just a summary of it, and talk a little bit more about Esther and, and what it means to us today. <clears throat> In our story there were some important characters. Let's just review who they were. Of course, the first one was Esther. And when I read the story, you'll find out why she was such a remarkable lady. Then there was Mordecai. Mordecai was her cousin. And when Esther's parents died when she was young, it was Mordecai who raised her as his own, as his own daughter. And he's important in this story. Then there's a bad guy. There's always a bad guy in, or in many stories. And his name is Haman. And we'll find out again what he did that was evil. Not good. We'll talk about the Jews, because Esther and Mordecai were both Jews. And you might recall that Jews were um, not accepted and often hated by other countries. And in fact, when this story takes place, the Jews were prisoners in the land of the king. And then the final character is the king himself. So I'm going to read a script that's called the, the Then Script. It's just a, a quick summary of the story of Esther. Hi, I'm Esther. You might know me as Queen Esther, but I wasn't always a queen. You see, when I was a little girl, I lived with my mother and my father, but they died. Then I moved in with my cousin, Mordecai, who lived at the palace. Growing up in the palace was great. I got to wear beautiful clothes, perfume, expensive jewelry. When the king noticed how beautiful I was, I was he asked me to be his queen. Many other people lived in the palace, too, like my cousin Mordecai and that sneaky Haman. Haman was the king's assistant. Haman thought he was so important that everyone should bow down to him. Many people did bow, to, bow down to him, except for my cousin Mordecai. You see, cousin Mordecai and I, I are Jews. We know not to bow down and worship anyone but God. But when Haman found this out, he became very angry. So he devised an evil plot and convinced the king to kill all of the Jews in the land. I was a Jew. What could I do? I had to think fast. I finally went to the king and I told him that both I and my uncle Mordecai were Jews. I said if he followed Haman's plan, we would both have to die. The king loves me very much. He decided to have Haman put to death instead, and my cousin Mordecai was made the king's new assistant. The king gave Mordecai his special ring and told him to write a new order giving all of the Jews freedom. What a day that was. All of my people were safe. Praise God for working through me to save them. This story about Esther is about being faithful. Here's the word faithful. And I apologize that it's not very clear. Esther is living in a strange land, far away from her home, and she finds herself in a really frightening situation. 
but Esther is faithful. She believes that God is with her no matter what, and she knows that God is looking out for her. So we're going to think a little bit about that word faithful. We are called to be faithful too, and that means we do what God wants us to do, and we seek to do whatever He He wills us to do or what He wants us to do. Sometimes that can mean being in a situation that isn't very pleasant. And remember, there was a lot at stake for Esther in this story. In order for anyone to go before the king and ask any kind of favor, you had to be given permission by the king himself and he gave permission by holding out his scepter which was like a rod and if he gave, held that out to you it meant that you could talk to him and he would listen to you if you came to him and he didn't hold out his scepter he could have you killed because that was the power of the king that he had so you can see esther was faced with quite a situation if I go to the king, even though he loves me, what if he wills me and all of my people to be killed? Or should I go and tell him the truth about Mordecai and I, because he doesn't know we're Jews, and take the risk of him listening to me? So she had quite a choice about whether she should be faithful or not. I want you to think a little bit about what you can do to be faithful, a faithful follower of Jesus. God has certain plans for us. He puts us in certain situations, and sometimes it's hard to make a decision about what we should do. It might sometimes seem like it'd be easier to just take the easy way out, but that can bring harm to yourself or to other people. So instead, when you face a situation that's difficult, think about, what would God want me to do? I should pray about this, and then I need to be faithful to what he tells me. Last week we had, I had sent a sheet to you that you were supposed to decode a Bible verse. I also asked you to, to send back your answers, and I felt badly because I didn't hear any, uh, didn't hear from any of you. But we're going to look at that verse because it was a really important verse that reminds us of the story of, of Esther and how it's important to be faithful. Jesus promises in the New Testament, Romans 8, 28, this is what he says, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. That comes from the New Testament book of Romans. That's a really good verse to remember. And when you have a tough situation to face and you and you know what the right thing is to, to say or do, even if it's hard, remember that God works all things for our good if we love him. So... Um, I would encourage you on your family activity sheet last week there's an activity on there that says for older kids even to this day the Jewish people every year have a celebration and it's called Purim Spelled like this, P-U-R-I-M. Purim is in memory. It, during this time, they remember what Esther and Mordecai did to save their people. And so it's really interesting to read about the celebration that's done yet by the Jewish people every year. In the now times based on something that happened thousands of years ago that we just read about in the Bible. So it is called Purim. And on this sheet, it suggests that you go on the internet 
or look it up somewhere else, to find out more about the Jewish celebration of Purim. And you'll be, you'll be amazed at what, how much of this story comes back to you as you read about it. I looked it up on, and there's a really good, it's like about a three to four minute video done with like cartoon characters, but it explains Purim really well. And it gave me uh, a new understanding and ideas about how it's celebrated. So this week, I encourage you to be faithful and or whatever that means to you. And it might mean making some hard choices sometimes. We're going to close in prayer and we're going to ask the Lord to make us and keep us faithful to him. Let's pray. Lord of all, sometimes I get confused about what's right and what's wrong. Help me to be faithful to you, to stand up and say no to evil, and to be a courageous servant of your people. Amen. Have a great week. I'll be tuning in next week with a new story. See you then.